In this video, we shall discover the following truths about consciousness. 1. How important is it to understand consciousness? 2. The assumption about consciousness in the West. 3. Sanatana Dharma has answers to the question of consciousness. 4. The components of nature. 5. Where can we find consciousness? 6. An example of conscious experience. 7. Answering what exactly is consciousness. This is an interesting topic for students of truth, for people who have gone a little beyond their daily grind of eating, mating, sleeping and defending. Asking this question, what is consciousness, is the question that can solve the entire mystery of life here on this planet and even beyond. At least for a sincere seeker who is asking about the nature of consciousness and pursuing it deeply, life shall pose lesser impediments. Such a powerful question does not beg for an answer. The question is so powerful that as man begins to introspect the possibilities of consciousness, he shall have answers to each and every problem of life and even perhaps get all other dependent questions dissolved once and for all. Now we shall delve deeper as to what is consciousness. Consciousness is a topic much pondered about in the West. But their approach is from observing the material phenomenon and then arriving at an answer towards the hard problem of consciousness. Many times patients with brain related challenges or sensory distortions are studied to get a hang of consciousness. Such an approach is like trying to discover the original name of a substance by trying to study the constituents of the substance. Is there a connection between the name and the constituents of a substance? There may be, but 99% of the times there is no correlation between the naming of a substance and its properties so to say. It seems quite illogical when one looks deeper into the matter. The Indian ethos is part of one of the most Indian civilizations the universe has ever known. Sanatana Dharma has enough modern and ancient evidence that it has no beginning. The Vedas predate even the humans and have direct answers to fundamental questions related to consciousness. However, unless one is ready to apply the principles as enunciated in the ancient Indian scriptures, consciousness shall continue to remain an unsolved hard problem of both philosophy and science. The ones who have applied the principles of the Dharma have directly experienced within themselves the nature of consciousness as well as attained all the secrets relating to the question of consciousness. There are fundamentally two essential components to nature, one conscious and the other sans consciousness. Many Western philosophers believe that consciousness is a byproduct of matter and has something to do with the brain. Some believe that the senses and our mental experience has something to do with consciousness. But a true sage who is established in perfect consciousness knows with absolute certainty that consciousness is beyond all bodies, individuals, places or things. It simply is and it is universal without a second. However, the experience of consciousness happens indirectly within the living entity through the brain, mind, the senses, emotions and all the secondary attributes of the human mind body constitution. It is wise to understand that consciousness is beyond all these limiting entity attributes. Consciousness itself gives rise to entities and not the other way around as is professed in the western world. The evolution of quantum mechanics is a giant stride in the direction of realizing consciousness so to say. Consciousness technically is never experienced but can only be realized. It is the mother of all entities and it permeates through all living and non-living entities. Even a so-called non-living entity is conscious in some way. But an average human being is unable to detect 
that consciousness people who perform spiritual practices and have awakened all their subtle energies and raised them to a considerably high pitch are able to even detect the consciousness that permeates through non living entities it is not a fakery that certain vehicle owners are able to connect with their cars or two wheeler vehicles better the vehicle also responds to the touch and the mood of their owners if the vehicle happens to be operated by another individual a friend of the owner although the friend is an adept in handling the vehicle he comes out with a complaint that the vehicle has some inherent problems the vehicle owner will surely disagree with his friend why does this happen this is not mere coincidence if we consider 50 such cases at least in 40 cases such an experience is not uncommon what is that which handles the sentiment between different individuals people say it is emotions feelings biases etc all this is true but the single entity that predominates as well as preludes experiences within this world is consciousness alone consciousness is a pure spiritual entity which has no material equivalent it is the source of all elements objects and entities when a person raises his pitch by suitable practices as prescribed in the sanatana dharma scriptures he shall directly be able to get access to the source of all operations which is the universal consciousness element it is this universal consciousness that operates and behaves differently as it occupies different people in different regions the temperaments of different people are a function of this consciousness that manifests itself in multifarious ways however when consciousness interacts with its own by products or evolutes that universal consciousness attains a level of contamination such levels of contamination itself contribute to the body the mind intellect memory configuration etc of various living entities when universal consciousness becomes absolutely frozen that consciousness itself becomes the things that we consider inanimate or lifeless something may appear lifeless but in reality it cannot be said that such an object is fully unconscious the scriptures of sanatana dharma reveal that the universe that we inhabit is fully aware fully conscious but because of our own inner blocks presuppositions and rigidity we have submerged ourselves into a semi conscious state where we see variety which is dull insipid putrid and divisive the day we awaken fully to consciousness we shall see a universe that is completely lit up with the fireworks of joyous consciousness